hello from the UK. And I'm very, very sorry that we don't have golden sandy beaches or palm trees or blue oceans yonder behind me. Of course, I am recording in the old bedroom that I grew up in. Liz, meanwhile, is in Parma, sunning herself with her brother. So I'm on my Todd. I wasn't going to put out a video this week. We were going to take a break, but uh, I've been going through some of my underwater photography. And for a while now, I've been thinking about submitting it to the Royal Photographic Society uh, in their accreditation system. Some of you may know that uh, I actually have letters after my name, LRPS, which is the licensorship of the Royal Photographic Society. And I've been thinking about submitting my photos for the next level up, which is ARPS, the associate uh, ship of the Royal Photographic Society. And uh, this is really an accreditation system, I suppose, that allows you to uh, submit 15 photographs, which have to make a cohesive set. So they're not 15 random photos, they have to kind of tell a story. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. I just wanted to start off with some sad news, unfortunately. Um, this one's particularly significant because our dear friend Naza of Cochin, who we got to know very well over three years while in India, uh, sadly passed away. He was only a couple of years older than me and uh, we got to know Naza and his family really well uh, to the point where he actually became Millie, our cat's surrogate father. Now, when we'd go off visiting places around India, Naza would look after our boat, Esper, uh, but more importantly, he would look after Millie. And he'd come down twice a day, not only feed her, but walk her up and down the pontoons. And most importantly, he would fish for her with his little uh, cane bamboo rod and uh, a, bit, a bit of string. And he would guarantee to catch Millie fish every day. And she absolutely adored him, as did we. We are frequently asked what's the most important thing about travel and we always reply the people and we even talked about this recently in one of our podcasts. NASA has always been top of our list of the people that we've met around the world as being special to us. Okay so on to the Royal Photographic Society ARPS submission. I've been a member of the RPS now for about 10 years or so and I've been meaning to submit some work for my ARPS accreditation. And uh, in order to do this, you have to be brutally honest about your photography. And when you submit work, it's examined by four or five professional photographers. Normally what you do is you print out your photos and mount them. And they have to make up this cohesive set, as they uh, uh, put it, to tell a story. And during that examination process, they will look at the technical side of your photography. I've been looking through my underwater photography of which I now have many hundreds and I've been trying to find 15 photos that really work. A lot of my photos are great for Instagram and you'll see in a moment when I put them up on the screen and you watch them as a video slideshow they'll be perfectly fine but when you look a bit more closely you'll see that uh, there are a few issues with these photographs so I just thought I would share the, the photos with you and also just talk quickly about why a lot of these photos wouldn't work and wouldn't pass the ARPS examination.
When you look at these photos, I think they probably look uh, acceptable when you're viewing them on YouTube or on social media like Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but if we just look at this photo, for example, this is one that uh, I, I really liked because it's just so isolated from the background. And uh, it looks great when you look at it from a distance, but unfortunately when you zoom in, you can see parts of it are actually out of focus. And this would have been simply because the camera decided to use a wide aperture, which shortens that uh, focal plane so that uh, half of the subject is out of focus. That kind of thing would have failed me. Here's another example of a beautiful blue worm. Uh, this is not a nudie, it's a worm. And uh, you can see again, the head of him is beautifully isolated and nicely in focus. But when you pan down and look at the rest of his body, it's just very slightly out of focus. And unfortunately, that is the sort of thing that uh, would fail as well. The main issue I've been having with a lot of my underwater photography is fringing. If you look at some of the edges of subjects, very close up, you'll see that there's a bit of color shift along those edges. So rather than being sharply defined uh, with a single edge, you'll find that there's a slight purple fringe to it. Some of this can be corrected in post-production, uh, but some of it is really quite difficult to remove. And it's only since I've been looking at my photos on the big screen that I've seen that actually these photos wouldn't pass the ARPS examination, which is a real shame. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's what I'm doing while back in the UK, going through some photographs and uh, amusing myself while Liz gallivants around in Parma. Thank you for watching. This week's video was completely unexpected, but I just thought I'd put something out there just to play the uh, YouTube algorithm game. And uh, we'd love to hear back from you, of course. I hope that you're all having a great summer break if you're on a summer break. Uh, but uh, please do subscribe to our channel if you haven't uh, like the video because that really does help us as well. Peace and fair winds.